This is a short video to explain CTCSS and DCS tone encoding on your two-way radios. If you have the Midland walkie-talkies, you may have noticed that they were advertised with 142 privacy codes. Well, they're not really privacy codes, but uh, CTCSS and DCS are what they're advertising. Now, CTCSS stands for Continuous Tone Coded Squelch System. This is an analog function. DCS stands for Digital Coded Squelch, which is, of course, a digital function. Both of these systems do exactly the same thing. But in the ECT, we use CTCSS because the analog function will be found on pretty much every two-way radio. Now, first, a word about squelch. What exactly is squelch? Well, the squelch is a circuit on your radios that mutes the receiver output in the absence of a detectable carrier frequency. In other words, when the radio is not receiving an incoming transmission. Without the squelch, your radio would sound like this. That would get up your sleeve pretty quickly, and it would also drain your battery. So again, the squelch mutes your radio receiver output when it is not detecting an incoming signal. It turns the speaker off basically when there's no traffic on the selected channel frequency. And when another station presses their PTT button, the radio generates a carrier frequency, which is then modulated by their voice, and this is what's called frequency modulation, or FM. Now when this carrier frequency is detected by your radio, your radio opens up its squelch circuit and you hear their transmission come through. This is why we wait a brief instant after pushing the PTT before we speak. It gives the receiving station a chance to open up their squelch circuit before you begin speaking so your transmission isn't clipped. Now CTCSS is just a different kind of squelch. When we program our radios to use CTCSS, it adds a continuous low frequency tone to our voice transmissions and it tells our radios to keep the squelch circuit closed unless it detects that same low frequency tone on an incoming signal. It's like a two-way pass key, basically, for opening up the squelch circuit. And these tones are very low in frequency, and they're easily filtered out by the radios. So we don't hear them when we're transmitting or, or receiving, but our radios detect them very easily. So if one group of stations are all using the same CTCSS tone on a given channel, then they will hear each other but they will not hear the transmissions of other nearby stations on the same channel if they are not using the same CTCSS tone. Okay, so now how is that going to work in, in, in real life? So we have four radios here. The two radios here do not have CTCSS tone programmed in, while the two over here do have CTCSS programmed in. This radio currently does not have CTCSS programmed into it. So what you'll see is when I push the push to talk button on this radio, these two radios will open up their squelch to receive the signal, but these two will not. WQWP394 radio check. Okay, you can see over on these two radios, you saw the little TX appear in the upper left hand corner indicating that they were receiving a transmission, but these two radios did not receive. Okay, so now we have the CTCSS tone programmed into the transmitting radio. Now watch carefully what happens with these four radios when I transmit this time. WQWP394, radio check. Okay, now that time, importantly, you saw that of course the two radios programmed with the same CTCSS tone opened up their squelch. However, the two radios that don't have CTCSS also opened up their squelch, okay? That's why they're not private. That's why privacy is, a, is the wrong word to use here. The idea here is that these two radios are simply waiting for a carrier frequency. So when I transmit with my CTCSS tone, it of course includes a carrier frequency. That's all these two radios need to open up. These radios, of course, are waiting for that specific tone. So when they hear that tone, they open up their squelch. Okay? The idea here is that when we're using CTCSS tones, we're not having a private conversation. Any radio that is on that channel, on that frequency, will hear our transmissions. The difference being that those of us using the CTS, CTCSS tone will not hear the transmissions of the other stations nearby who are not using it. So now, why would we use CTCSS tones? 
Well, there are only 22 frequencies available to the FRS and GMRS systems uh, from the FCC. So there's a limited number of frequencies that all users have available to them. And what we find is, is that a lot of businesses, uh, gardening crews, landscapers, construction crews, that should be using and paying for business radios on business frequencies are simply illegally using the GMRS frequencies for business. So that means that, especially during work hours, Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, really, uh, these GMRS channels have a lot of traffic on them. Now that doesn't come into play for most of our stations because most of our stations are using the Midland walkie talkies. We're down in the canyon somewhere and we're not really getting access to those illegal signals from outside of the canyon. But some of our zone leaders are up on ridges and they have antennas up on the roof and they have much more powerful and more sensitive radios. So they're picking up these signals from the valley and from the basin. And it presents uh, quite a problem in trying to even conduct a practice net. Now, these stations will probably not be operating illegally during an emergency, but we also don't know what other stations will come on the frequencies in an emergency. Uh, people who just happen to have radios uh, in a drawer somewhere, turning them on and, and trying to find if anybody's on the air. So we've decided to use the CTCSS tones on certain channels, the uh, upper channels 16 through 22, in particular, because those are the higher power channels and those are the channels that our zone leaders are using to communicate with each other and with me. We're also using them in zone seven on channel seven on the zone primary channel because that particular area is uh, exceptionally vulnerable to the illegal signals uh, coming from outside of the canyon. Now there's a separate video explaining how to uh, program your radios to put the CTCSS tones in. So you can check that video out um, elsewhere on the, uh, on the channel here. Um, but that's basically it. That's the idea behind uh, the CTCSS tones, why we use them, and uh, hopefully you have a better understanding of how they work now. If you don't, if you still have any questions, of course, you all know how to reach me. Hit me via email, give me a call on the cell, and um, I'll be sure to uh, straighten you out as soon as I can, okay? Thanks for tuning in, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.